Hello everyone, my name is Fawaz. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing here at Notice Technologies. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, AR automation, how as a GP user you can improve your uh, receivables process and also uh, secure your payment processing. Um, today's agenda, we will talk about a quick introduction. Uh, we're going to also identify what are and what is an inefficient AR process and how can you improve upon them. Then we're going to talk about PCI compliance, security, probably one of the most important topic these days. And then after that, we are going to take a very quick look into some of the solutions that we as Notice Technologies offer, which can help you streamline your AR processes and secure your payment processing. So a very quick introduction on who we are. Um, as a company, we specialize in e-commerce and electronic payment applications that integrate with Microsoft Dynamics GP. We have been in GP business for over 14 years now, uh, since 2002, pretty much ever since Microsoft had GP. And over 14 years, we have more than 1,400 customers globally who are using our applications. Now, one of the most important things that as a company we focus on is the security aspect of the solution. We work very closely with the PCI Security Council to ensure not only we are always up to date with the most recent compliance regulations, but also to make sure that our applications are always certified with the highest level of uh, and the most recent uh, uh, PCI requirements. So everything that we will talk about, all these processes, they are PCI certified. Uh, so PADSS certification is uh, something very important. And I will talk about PCI and security as we go during this presentation as well. So uh, let's identify what are some of these inefficient AR processes. Uh, and, and inefficient AR processes is consist of manual labor, uh, which can cause customer inconvenience. It involves your team to do extra work and double entry uh, of uh, in their books, in their accounting system. And then also, which can lead into um, additional expense and time uh, to pro for your uh, processes to complete. And then, of course, there's always a risk of fraud whenever there is uh, any manual um, entry uh, of payment information. To, to improve upon these process, today we're going to talk about automation. How can you automate uh, some of these processes? We're going to talk about uh, how can you make this entire process convenient for your customers so you can provide good customer service. Um, very importantly, we will also talk about integration. Uh, we are all uh, GP users, so we will talk about how can you have a system that's integrated to your accounting system so there is no manual uh, data entry. And then, of course, we will talk about security and PCI compliance. How can you secure your AR process and secure your customer's credit card or their financial data? So let's take a little deeper look into what consists of a manual AR process. Um, when you are collecting uh, uh, your uh, receivables from uh, payments from your customers, uh, one often uh, fact that people don't realize is uh, it is true that in order to uh, make money, you have to spend money. But what people don't realize is that in order to collect money, how much money are we actually spending? Um, a manual process would be sending email, uh, mail, mailing or emailing invoices to your customers, and after that, sending reminders to your customers about their payments, collecting payment information over the mail or over the phone from your customers, and once you finally have that payment information on hand, to process that payment uh, through a terminal or a virtual terminal, or if it's a check, to take that check to the bank and deposit it. Uh, once that payment goes through, sending that payment confirmation to your customer, um, the receipts, and then after that, entering those payments into uh, your accounting system. All of this ca can be a very time-consuming and lengthy process. And this can have uh, issues in this process too. Look, for example, if you're sending emails or mailing invoices, they can always be lost in transit, or your customers can say that they never received it. Um, when you're trying to collect payment from your customers, you might have to make multiple phone calls in order to just reach your customers. And then 
after that in case if the payment didn't go through then you would have to start the whole process again reach the customer again to uh, get a new payment information and then process it all of this is like i said very time consuming and but most importantly very expensive there was a study done a white paper and this white paper can also be uh, uh, if you need the white paper we can definitely provide you that too but according to the study on average 80 percent of the collection process consists of labor uh, cost so labor is actually one of the because of the time that you're spending in this manual process labor is actually one of the biggest cost that uh, comes into play uh, speaking of cost uh, there was another study done um, based on a company that was sending 600 invoices a month 600 invoices is is not a very large number but at the same time it's not a very small so it's sort of like an average uh, specifically for a lot of GP users so for a company uh, that was sending only 600 invoices a month if you uh, calculate how much cost they were spending or how much money they were spending and printing these invoices mailing it to their customers are preparing and sending all the notices then second notice third notice and after that once the once the money comes in receiving and applying those payments into your accounting system all of that cost according to this particular case study came out to be monthly more than six thousand dollar and annually that was more than seventy two thousand dollars um, very very large number that people often don't uh, consider and if you look at the pie chart that shows over here, it shows you that the labor part of it, which is like receiving and applying the payment into your accounting system, was one of the largest um, area of expense. So there are tools out there which can help you uh, streamline some of these processes. Uh, one of the most commonly used tool is an online bill pay system. That's something that I, we all of us can relate to. We pay our cell phone bills online, we pay our utility bills online. Likewise, our customers are expecting us to provide an online portal for they, so they can pay their bills on uh, on time. Um, as we can see that um, it is the online billing system has becoming more and more popular day by day. Um, uh, like I said, all of us can relate to it, and this uh, also applies to our customers. There are a lot of studies done that shows the benefit of using an online bill pay system. For example, if you offer an online bill payment portal for your to your customers, they're 35% more likely to pay their bills on time. Um, and also if your customers are tied to an online payment system, sort of like an auto pay maybe, or they're enrolled into your online billing system, it shows that they're 12.5% less likely to leave. This is something that all of us can probably relate to. Um, if we are tied into a automatic payment plan or like an online payment system, then oftentimes, even if we don't use that service, we don't uh, cancel our subscription or we don't, uh, uh, you know, there's a high chance that we won't leave. So the statistic proves that if you have customers who are tied to your online bill pay system, they're less likely to leave your business. And then uh, there's also another interesting study that was shown, which shows that people who pay their bills online 20 percent are uh, they are 20 percent um, more uh, known for purchasing 20 percent more products from your company than uh, people who are not making online transactions so online bill pay system is definitely a very uh, a very very important tool these days it can help you tremendously streamline your uh, ar process and also improve your customer service because now you are empowering your customers to take charge of their uh, payments. Since we are talking uh, about Microsoft Dynamics GP, um, an accounting system in the back end, so integration is equally important. Uh, it, having a proper integration can bridge the gap between your payments and your accounting system. If you don't offer an integrated system, then you're uh, not only uh, uh, having or spending a lot of time doing double entry which can obviously cause in uh, you know risk and human errors because every time you key or you rely on human to key in there is always chances for typo or, or errors um, and of course with that there is no reporting online reporting uh, available 
And then with that, also all the reconciliation will also be a all manual process. So this is all the consequences of not having an integrated system. So we are going to look into how can we um, how, how can we use or utilize an online bill pay system to uh, to ha and see how that it can integrate with Dy Dynamics uh, GP. Another part that we're also going to talk about is security. Security is something extremely important these days. Um, so with security. Uh, or especially with the all the events that has happened or been happening lately or pertaining the data breaches, um, many uh, merchants, many businesses are very concerned about protecting their customers' credit card data. There's a fact that's very important when it comes to PCI and security, and that is that it is your responsibility as a merchant, it is your responsibility to uh, ensure or to protect your your customers' credit card data. So if if you became a victim of data breach because you were not protecting your customers' credit card data, all the responsibility will fall on you as a merchant. So this is something very important to keep in mind. Now, uh, speaking of data breaches, the cost of a data breach. Uh, is something important as well. Have, if you became a victim of a data breach, it can be a very, very costly uh, process. Uh, there was a study done that says an average cost for a small business uh, at the time um, of data breach is thirty-six thousand dollars, which is still like a big, um, uh, still a, a big number. But more importantly, the the worst part of this is that there was a st study done that thirty-one percent of your customers. Are likely to terminate their relationship um, with you once they hear about the data breach or events they hear about the news regarding data breach. Um, and I think this is something that all of us can also again relate to. If we are tied to a service or to a company that we're doing business with, and all of a sudden we hear uh, in news that this company lost uh, what was became a victim of a data breach and lost all their customers credit card data then we will definitely think twice before we continue doing business with them so it is proven that 30% uh, of the customers will terminate a relationship once they hear that news so protecting the cust the customers credit card data is very important uh, from the security perspective as well as from your uh, uh, from your business uh, and customers perspective now there is a council out there called PCI security council that uh, makes sure that all the credit card data is protected or every customer's credit card data is protected um, we are not going to talk too much about PCI compliance in uh, too much of a details I'm just gonna um, have do a little overview so uh, PCI uh, stands for payment card industry for those who have not heard of it uh, a PCI security council is uh, is a governing body that ensures or that protects card holders um, all of us who have credit cards we're all credit card holders and PCI uh, Security Council makes sure that our uh, information is protected and how does it do that it does it by making sure that every merchant every business whoever is accepting credit card it makes sure that they're following the right procedures and protocols in order to secure uh, the customers credit card uh, data so PCI uh, compliance comes up with regulations they come up every uh, so often on uh, sometimes few times uh, about quarterly or biannual basis to security updates that uh, that uh, every uh, merchant who is follow who is accepting credit cards uh, needs to follow now here's another important fact uh, PCI applies to everyone who accepts credit card regardless of the size of business even if you're a small corporation or if you're a giant enterprise as long as you are accepting credit cards from your customers PCI compliance applies to you now PCI DSS is something that a PCI Security Council has um, uh, has set in place for companies who make payment applications such as notice so DSS stands for data security standard so as a company we have to make sure that every payment application that we develop 
we have to make sure that it gets certified by PCI and gets the DSS stamp on it before we can launch it to our customers or before we can release that product. So having an application or software or an online bill pay system or an e-commerce system uh, that any application that has payment processing capability, having P PCI DSS is a mandatory requirement. There is a very interesting website that uh, you can take a note of. It's called uh, PCISecuritystandards.org. This is PCI Security Council's website. You can go here. You can not only learn about all the, the new events and the news that is happening in the world of PCI and security, but also uh, you can check uh, any software that you're using internally with your business. You can verify that if this uh, software has been certified by PCI or not. So, uh, like I said, this is a security website that uh, PCISecurityCenter.org that you can take a note of, uh, and very interesting uh, website to bookmark. To improve upon security, there are different methods that uh, businesses or that software companies have adapted in order to uh, reduce the risk or reduce uh, the scope of PCI uh, in order to make sure that it makes it easy for businesses or for merchants to protect customers' credit card, uh, credit card data. One of this method is called tokenization. A tokenization is basically a process in which you don't store any customer's credit card data on your servers or on your file. So this way, um, it reduces some of your burden. Um, many businesses, um, especially if you're in a B2B business or even if you're in a B2C business, there are requirements where you may want to hold on to your customer's payment information, such as their credit card number or their ACH number. Maybe you want to do like a subscription billing for to them, or maybe you want to have your customers enrolled in an auto pay kind of system. So for all of that, you would want to have their information on file. But with the method of tokenization, you can basically store that information outside of your network, which you still have access to. But as far as your IT infrastructure is concerned, as far as your servers are concerned, you can wipe them clean and you can make sure that the credit card data does not sit in your system. So this is a method that the industry, payment industry has adapted uh, and has become very, very uh, successful and very popular because by adapting such method, not only you can, uh, like I said, that you can uh, reduce the scope of PCI compliance, but also you can save a lot of money on the process, um, uh, and also save a lot of money on the um, on the your IT infrastructure cost. So what I'm going to talk about today is um, in our solution. What we have done is we have created a cloud-based payment engine called PayFabric. PayFabric is a notices cloud-based payment processing and a storage hub. So what we do is uh, we basically tokenize all the credit card data in a cloud outside of your network and outside of your servers. So this way, if you decide to use, uh, if you have, if you're using an online bill pay system through Notice or if you're using a credit card processing solution or an e-commerce solution, you can uh, have, you can um, use these solutions, you can process payments, but you, you you can use PayFabric to store all the credit card data outside of your uh, outside of your network on a secure cloud. PayFabric is capable of working with or integrating with pretty much all the major payment gateways across the United States. Uh, and uh, using PayFabric, uh, three very very important uh, uh, pieces or three important uh, key points that gets eliminated from your system is number one is um, point of entry. Uh, what happens is that, um, and I will show you this in a in a in few minutes, how the the window or the area where you enter the credit card number, that point of entry is eliminated. It's not sitting on your servers or your on your application anymore. Even if you're processing credit cards through inside of GP, which I'm going to show you how to do that, um, the actual point of entry is not GP anymore. It's actually outside of your. Uh, network. Secondly, the actual processing of credit card. So now you're not processing when you're communicating with the payment gateway for process. That is not happening between your GP or your servers and uh, the payment gateway. That actual processing of the credit card is happening between the PayFabric cloud and the payment gateway. 
And then thirdly, and probably most importantly, storage. Now with this system, you're not storing any credit card on file. So this, uh, this process can definitely uh, help you uh, secure your customer's credit card data and help you secure your uh, payment processing, uh, your AR processes. So what we're going to be talking about today, um, I'm going to show you a quick uh, demonstration of uh, two of our solution. One is called Credit Card Advantage, and the second one is an online bill pay solution. So Credit Card Advantage uh, is basically what sits inside of GP. It allows you to process payments uh, directly within GP. You can process these payments in a real-time manner, or you can process them in a batch mode. Uh, but uh, very importantly, that uh, it utilizes uh, PayFabric in the back end to store all the credit card information off-premise in a cloud. So although you're processing payments inside of GP, you can uh, keep the credit card information on file, but nothing gets stored uh, within GP and nothing gets stored on your server. So I'm going to show you how uh, that uh, works. And then after that, we're also going to look into our online bill pay solution, ePay Advantage. So I'm going to show you how you can allow your customers to pay their bills at, on their convenience, at their convenience. They don't have to wait for your business hours to make sure your, um, uh, you know, uh, to make sure that you know your representative are, the, are there to answer the phone calls. They don't have to mail you payment. You can simply provide them a portal where they where can they go online. They can view their outstanding balances or invoices. They can make a payment securely, and then I will show you how these payments are processed and automatically integrated back into GP uh, in real time. Uh, which overall. We'll see how this will improve the efficiency of your AR process by eliminating any manual entry or any paper uh, billing. So there are a lot of benefits, uh, such as it supports multi-currency. If you're using national account support, uh, we will talk about all that as well. So I'm going to uh, share my screen with you, and I'm going to show you, like I said, I'm going to show you a brief uh, overview of how some of these solutions uh, work. So I'm going to start off with Credit Card Advantage inside of GP. So as I mentioned, Credit Card Advantage is an add-on to GP. So once we install Credit Card Advantage, it becomes part of GP. So under transaction, you will be able to see Credit Card Advantage and all of its uh, menu items over here. Using Credit Card Advantage, you can process payments within GP in real time or in a batch mode. You can process these payments from any of the receivable modules inside of GP, such as sales transaction entry, invoice entry, transaction entry, or even cash receipt. So let's take an example. Uh, let's uh, assume that you had an invoice that's already been posted, and now your customer wants to make a payment. So I'll show you how you can uh, process a payment directly from the cash receipt, and then you can continue with your regular accounting GP process where you can apply that cash receipt to an invoice. Mm -hmm. So first, I'm going to show you how to process a payment through cash receipt window. So let's say if you have a cash receipt, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a cash receipt. Uh, simple, this is again, this is nothing but just a regular GP process. As my method of payment, I'm going to select credit card because I am processing credit card for this payment. I'm going to enter the dollar amount, and then I will hit tab. When I tab off, it will automatically open up this window called e-transfer window. This is where Credit Card Advantage kicks in. This is Notices Credit Card Advantage window. As you can see, there's a default credit card, which is a primary credit card that has been pre-populated for your convenience. You can use this credit card. You can drop down and you can see what other credit cards this customer has in wallet. And if this is a new customer and he does not have, if the customer does not have any credit card on uh, in the wallet, then you can even add a new credit card number here. Now, very important to note that again, this system is utilizing notices pay fabric. So this is an iframe that's being pulled directly from. Uh, the PayFabric Cloud, which means 
is when I'm doing the selection, this is actually happening on the cloud. And even when I enter the credit card number, this is not touching GP. It's actually going straight to the uh, Payfabric cloud. So from the security perspective, you can confidently say that the credit card number does not touch your GP in this process, even for a split second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this existing credit card that I have on file as an example. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the process button. It will process this payment for me and then I will get my message. So real time processing so I will know right away if it was approved or declined. If this payment did not go through, I would have gotten a declined message. This message is coming directly from the processor. It says it's been approved. If I hit OK, it will show me a confirmation that I can view on the screen, I can print, I can save it on a file, or if I want, I can also set it up in a way that every time a credit card is processed, this confirmation is sent in an email directly to the customer. Let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to display it on the screen. Again, this is a simple confirmation receipt, but the idea is that part of your streamlining your AR processes, you can automate the process of sending confirmation. So you can set it up that whenever you process a credit card, this confirmation receipt will automatically be emailed to the customer in the back end, which will help you save a lot of time by eliminating the need of manual emails. And that's it. As far as your credit card is concerned, your job is completed. You don't have to do anything more beyond this point. Uh, you can, like I said earlier, you can continue uh, with your regular GP or accounting process, like you can apply this to an outstanding invoice, you can post this payment or just save it in a batch. But as far as the payment is concerned, it has been processed. You don't have to do anything more beyond this point. Uh, it will automatically settle into your bank account according to the settlement process that that uh, which depends on the gateway uh, that you're using in the back end. We're going to look at the same. Uh, uh, we're going to look at the payment processing again, but this time I'm going to show you from a sales transaction entry window from an invoice level. Although you can process through an order as well, uh, but I'm going to start off with an invoice real quick. So I am going to create an invoice right now. So let's say I have an invoice for this uh, customer, and and what I'm going to do is... I need to process the payment. So all I have to do is I can hit a shortcut control S or I can go to additional and click on this button, uh, this option right here that says sale or credit transaction. This will open up the same e-transaction entry window that you saw earlier. Again, the same rule applies. Um, it will sh display you this customer's wallet. So it will show you what payment information this customer has in wallet. So you can use either one of the payment information that you have on file, or you can type in a new credit card number if you like. I'm going to use this payment for now. I'm going to hit process. It will process this payment in real time, and it will do two things. First, it will process it, so I will get a, a message whether it's approved or declined. In this case, it's approved. And then it automatically applies to that invoice as well. So this step shows you that it's been processed. And also, this confirmation also gets can be sent in an email automatically to the customer. Let me show you one more time. This is slightly different than what you saw earlier. This one, this since it's coming from an SOP um, in GP, it has a line item uh, information on it as well. So it's like a mini invoice, if you want, if you will. So this also can automatically be emailed in the back end to the customer. So this step shows you that the payment was processed, and now this step right here shows you that the payment has already been applied to this document. I don't have to do anything here beyond this point. I can, uh, all I have to do is just, this window was all opened up automatically. All I have to do is just view, make sure it's okay, and then hit the okay button. And there you go, your payment in matter of couple of seconds and couple of clicks only, not only you were able to securely process this payment, you did that without leaving GP, and you also uh, did that without doing any manual entry. The system automatically entered the payment in the uh, on the invoice for you. So um, again, the C is credit card advantage has enormous amount of features. 
Um, if you do want to look into a deeper dive, uh, please contact your representative at Bond Consulting. They'll be more than happy to assist you uh, coordinate um, a call with notice uh, and one of the representatives here at notice, which can help you uh, take a deeper life dive into the product. Um, but just to give you a few highlights, uh, we support different type of transactions. Uh, I, I did a sale transaction. You can also do returns like credit transaction if you want. Um, we also support pre-authorization and delayed capture. So basically, when you if you're creating an order, you can pre-authorize a credit card, and at the time of uh, when the order is fulfilled, has been transferred to an invoice, then you can capture that payment as well. Uh, plus, everything that we have done, uh, I, I was uh, talking, I was doing this in an individual one by one method, but we do support uh, batch processing as well. So if you want to process any of this in bulk. Uh, you can do that. So let's say if you have a batch of orders that you want in to process payments on, you can uh, do that in bulk as well. Uh, plus, uh, credit card advantage comes along with a lot of reporting uh, functionality as well, where you can uh, run reports, you can do customer inquiries, you can uh, see your daily transaction summary. And also, you can it, it comes with reconciliation tool, which help you reconcile your GP with your uh, with uh, your uh, gateway, so you can see what has been deposited in your account versus what's in GP. So at this point, I'm going to switch gears a bit, and I'm going to take you to the online bill pay portal uh, called ePay Advantage. ePay Advantage is another tool that is extremely helpful when it comes to streamlining your receivable process. Um, this is again, this is a very very similar concept to like how you pay your cell phone bills or how you pay your utility bills. Very similarly, you can allow your customers to go online and uh, take charge of their account on their own. So basically, they can make anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anytime they want, they can go online, they can view their accounts, they can update their payment information on file, and they can also uh, process uh, payments. So. Um, one quick note before I start, please ignore the look and feel and the graphics. This is an on-premise solution, so when we install this on your servers, you do have an act, you do get an access to uh, all the site files, so you can modify the look and feel. Um, you can put your own logos, your own pictures, colors. Your, you can basically rebrand this uh, according to your requirements. A lot of companies like to uh, link the online bill pay portal with their existing company website so um, and they want to make it look uh, somewhat similar so you can do that as well so please ignore the look and feel as we go um, I'm gonna explain you how it works and I'll show it to you so let's say if you have an invoice in GP the moment you post that invoice to the customers account in GP immediately ePay picks that invoice up and bring it to his portal and at the same time ePay sends an automatic uh, email notification to the customer, letting them know that, hey, there's a new invoice. Customers can log in, they can view that invoice, they can download it, print it, and then they can make a payment. Payment gets processed, and upon successful process, ePay will send that payment back to GP, it will create a cash receipt, and it will automatically apply it to the corresponding invoice, or invoices if there's more than one invoice. So this whole process happens in a very seamless and an integrated manner. So let's look at that. I'm going to log in as a customer right now. When I log in as a customer, it takes me to a list of my outstanding invoices. I can see all my outstanding invoices. I can uh, go over here where I can see my total balance that's due. Uh, you can also allow your customers to see credit that they have on file if they do have any credit on file with you. And not only that, you can also allow your customers to use that credit and apply it towards one of their outstanding invoices as well. Uh, likewise, you can allow your customers to see historical invoices too. These are all the old invoices that are in the system. Um, you can go as far back in history as you want, but basically all the old invoices can be viewed over here. And then your customers can also see payment history. They can see all the payments that they have uh, made uh, in past. And for any of the invoices 
they can click on the invoice to see the invoice details. They can see uh, the entire invoice. They can download a, a PDF of this invoice. They can print this invoice as well if they like. So basically, on the outstanding invoice page, uh, this column shows you invoice number, invoice date, due date, amount, balance that's due on this invoice. You can allow your customers to pay these invoices in full. You can pay them multiple invoices at the same time. Or if you want, you can also allow your customers to make partial payments. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, I want to pay $100 on this invoice. And let's say I want to make, like, let's say $75 on this invoice. So just for the sake of example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make payments on these two invoices. And what I'm paying is this is the balance, but this is the payment that I'm making on each invoice. There's another option over here that you can utilize if you like. It's called prepayment. It's essentially like a deposit. It's a payment that's not associated to an invoice. So if you want to collect a deposit or a prepayment from your customers, you can utilize this functionality. Basically, this will be uh, this will go as unapplied because it doesn't relate to any invoice, right? So in GP, it will basically create like an unapplied cash receipt for you. And then, of course, you can send notes with this payment uh, as well. These notes also get submitted back to GP. Now, um, if I hit Next, it will basically show me my review and payment page where I can see what am I paying. I can also see my payment information that I have on file. Your There is another feature that we have added, which, again, is something that if you don't want to use, you can disable this, but it's, it's basically an upcharge or surcharge. So if you want to impose a surcharge on your payments, you can do that. You can call it whatever you want, um, service fee, convenience fee, portal fee. Like It doesn't matter. So if you can name it however you want it. And this could be a percentage base or it could be a fixed amount. In this example, I'm calling it a service fee. And I put a note here that says a service fee of $5.08 will be applied to this payment. Now, you can also restrict this fee according to the tender type or like the payment type. So for example, if I pay by credit card, I have a service fee. But if, it, if I pay by electronic check, then there is no service fee on it. All vice versa, or you can apply for on both payments, it's up to you. For credit cards, there's also additional fraud protection services that we offer. So um, if you want to do like a CVV2 code check, which is security code, those three digits behind the credit card, you can uh, impose that. You can do zip code uh, mismatch, address verification. Um, you can also allow your customers to pay now or pay later. Uh, if they pay later, they can select a date on that specific date, and that the payment will automatically be processed on that date. Or you can basically allow your customers to pay now. Um, you can also make it mandatory that they must agree to your terms and conditions at the time of check uh, at the time of submitting a payment. You can put your own legal wordings over here. Now, another thing that I do want to point out before I make a payment is that the pay the wallet here that you see, this essentially this is also sitting on PayFabric. This is not on your portal. This is not on your servers. So it's coming directly from the PayFabric uh, cloud. So, and this is the same wallet that you were able to view uh, in GP. So when a customer comes here to the wallet or when they go ahead and add a new credit card number, it will be saved on the PayFabric cloud. So which means that you will automatically will have that uh, access to that information from GP as well. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this credit card payment for for this amount. So it's going to process this payment in real time. So once again, this is a real time processing. So it will tell me right away if the payment went through or if it was declined. So this way, I don't have to deal with declines. It's a customer who would know right away if this payment didn't go through, and they will get a decline message. Um, and then if they get a decline message, they will be prompted to enter a new credit card information. Now, in this case, the payment went through, so you got an approval message. This shows that the payment actually went through. A copy of this confirmation has already been uh, sent in an email to the customer. So once again, you don't have to send any manual confirmations. Along with that, this payment has already been submitted to GP, 
and has been applied to these invoices for these amount. So again, all, all of that has happened in real time. Just to show you what it looks like, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this payment in GP. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this payment number. Again, I'm only doing this to show you how or what the payment looks like inside of GP. So payment number 94, I'm going to go in, go to transactions, sales, cash receipt, and I'm going to go ahead and paste that number here. And I'll see that it came in right away. It comes in immediately. Uh, and not only that it came in right away, it's been applied to the right invoices for the right amount. So for example, $75 was applied to this invoice, $100 was applied to that invoice. So everything is mapped out. You don't have to figure out which payment goes to which invoice. Your team doesn't have to do any manual entry, any keying in. So, so there is practically no chance for any errors. All of that happens um, automatically uh, for you. What the system does is system creates a daily batch. So for ex and by, by default, the prefix says ePay and today's date on it. So you can uh, you can change the naming convention if you like, but by default it says ePay. Uh, today is 2016, August 16th. So any payment for that for today. So all the payments that are being processed, as they're being processed, they'll be keep coming into this batch. Um, the system creates a new batch uh, whenever the first payment of the day comes in. Um, so in the next day, your team can come in, they can review this batch however they like, and they can post it however they like. So we're not posting it, we're just basically saving all these payments in the batch, in a batch for you. So this is how basically from an online bill pay system, your customers can go online, uh, they can view uh, their, uh, their payment history, they can view uh, their outstanding invoices, they can manage their wallet. Uh, there are also many other options such as um, auto pay, they can sign up for auto pay. Essentially, that's pretty much very similar to like, you know how for your cell phone, you can keep a credit card information on file and then just say that, hey, have my bill paid up, paid off automatically. Likewise, your customers can keep their uh, check information, all their credit card information on file, and have their bill be paid automatically according to that auto pay contract as well. Um, plus, this system does have a, uh, also have a, um, a customer service side to it too. So even your external team members can log in, oh sorry, even your internal team members somebody from your company can log into view and manage account so for example if I'm on a phone with a customer I can in, I can just simply log in over here and I can see, I can uh, basically click on the lookup customer button I can see any of my customer I can click on that customers information and I can see what invoices that they have open and if somebody wants to pay over the phone I can pretty much just click over here and submit the payment. So very similar to how a customer processes a payment, a customer service rep can process a payment on behalf of a customer as well. Just to wrap up uh, some of the key values that we talked about, um, we talked about uh, by improving your, uh, uh, by improving your AR processes, not only your streamlining, shortening your process and by, and you're saving money, but you're also providing your customers uh, a, a good customer service by allowing them to take charge of their payments at their own leisure time or at their own convenience. Um, by using system like notice that I just showed you with PayFabric in the back end, it can significantly uh, help you uh, secure your processes. It can uh, s uh, reduce the burden of PCI compliance um, with, with this technology which can also entail in helping you save money, not only on the process side, but also on the uh, on the payment processing side. It has features like Smart Fill for level two, level three processing that can help you, uh, the fraud protection services that can help you with data breach. And most importantly, as a company, like I said, we work with, with many of the major payment gateways out there, which can support both US and international uh, uh, currencies.